Hello my friends, how are you doing? Hackerman is at it again and today I've got some pretty amazing stuff for you. And as you know, there's only two things certain in life. Mama is always right and Hackerman got the good stuff. Also don't forget about my live stream tomorrow 8 p.m. CEST and at the end of the video a little bit of an Hackerman dance. Let's get started. So first I'm gonna show you the hacked version. This is not from Akatsuzi, this is what I did with it. I transformed it into something you can do in automatic 1111 and the idea here is that you use a gradient as an input now i have here some extra bits for that because as you can see not only did i create a gradient but i also painted on that a little bit with a brush so i can define where my character is in the image giving me some more control over what we want to create now here's the thing i'm using affinity photo to create these gradients you can use any kind of free software where GIMP is good, any kind of online tool where you can create these kind of gradients. I have an extra layer here that I can use to paint on this kind of blob that defines where my character is going to be. I have it in the same ratio and the same resolution I want to use for the image to image render. Now when we are going back into automatic 1111, you can see here I have set up my model, in this case ref animated. I have set it up to clip skip 2. I'm using my normal prompt and negative prompt as I always would and then down here I've loaded in the image to image tab that's pretty important my gradient here and when we scroll down to the settings you can see I'm using the DPM++ SDE Keras sampler I'm using 25 steps I have here the resolution set up for my image CFG scale in this case is 8 and the denoise strength is 0.75 it's pretty high because we want to have an um, image created by the model. So what this actually does is using the setup of my color grading as the base for the colors I have in my image. And because of that I can nicely define I want to have pink and blue background here and you can see the same happening here in the alley. Now one thing that you don't have an image to image is a high res upscale. So for that I would suggest to you to do a second step. Now for that you want to click down here on the send to image to image button. This is going to send the image over here. And then what you want to do is simply go down here and reduce the denoise strength to 0.2 so that the image stays as close as possible. And then also you can set here resize by and you want to slide that up to two so you get an upscale of the image. And as you can see, we get a beautiful high res version of that. It has the same colors that I set up in my gradient and it has the style of the model. All of that is pretty amazing. Next, let's talk about what Akatsuzi has done. And this is creating these nodes here. They create a gradient. She has a lot of presets in there for the different colors you can create. So there's no direct color select but there is a long list of different kind of gradients you can choose and also you can do all kinds of these different patterns and styles and things that are using these kind of sine waves and so on to create different kinds of gradient styles that can help you to create really amazing interesting images from that so that can be very very creative and here you can see a use I will upload this as a JSON file so you can use that I modified a little bit the build from Akatsuzi so you have a better overview of what is going on. So here is the output as you can see and over here on the left side we have the gradient input. Now here is how that works. Up here in the first box we have the model choice. So in this case I'm using Fenris XL and then also the load VAE SDXL VAE and here I have my prompt and my negative prompt. Now down here in this box, what is happening is that we are creating here a base image with this resolution, 1024 by 1024. And we are going to create down here our gradient. As you can see, the gradient is 512 by 512. And it has the plasma setup, which you can see over here. Very nice going from yellow to orange to pink to violet. Now Akatsuzi is using here an upscaler for that. And 
and then also tiling it. What the tiling does, as I was told, is that it creates a little bit more noise inside of the gradient. So the gradient has more details in that. Then this is going into the first sampler, which is rendering, as you can see here with the denoise of 0.85. And then this is again going through a tile here and going to a second K sampler with a denoise of 0.95. So this is completely changing again the first image we get from down here over here. What this does is that it strongly stylizes the image. And then over here you can see that there is a upscale which is basically a high res fix because we are going only with a rescale factor of one so the resolution is staying the same and here's the output of that and you can see it's a very stylized very nice image that has a lot of design and artistic output in there and all of that is based on the usage of that kind of gradient so that is pretty amazing try it out download this and what I would absolutely suggest to you is that you download and install the extension ComfyUI Manager. I will link that below. Installing this extension is super easy. So as you can see over here, what you want to do is to copy this line git clone and then the address of that GitHub project. Go into your ComfyUI Windows Portable folder, into the ComfyUI folder, into the ComfyUI Notes folder. Up here in the address bar, you type CMD. And then when you go in here, you simply paste in your Git clone with the web address, hit enter. This is downloading the folder and then you restart ComfyUI. Now what this does is it gives you this manager here. And with that, you can click here and install missing custom nodes so that this will install all of the nodes that I used here that you are missing to use this project here. Now here, my friends, is something else that I have built. I wanted to go with a little bit of a simpler route, but at the same time, I also wanted to stay closer to what the model can create. So when we look at that over here, we have the setup with our Dream Shaper, with our VAE 840,000. So this is a 1.5 model. I have here my prompt, my negative prompt and so on. I sent this into the first K sampler and this is creating an image just as usual as you would expect from that model. Now here's where the gradient comes in. I'm creating the gradient already in the resolution I want to use. You can have here a preview of that. Then I VAE encode that. So this becomes a latent. And what I'm doing here is a latent blend between this image here and the gradient. So you can see here the output it's kind of blurry, but it also has this gradient on top of that. Now I'm sending this here as a latent, this mix as a latent into the second K sampler. Again, as you can see on the first one, I have a denoise of one. So we are just using text to image. On the second one, I have a denoise of 0.55. So it's taking that image into consideration, but we have blended it with the gradient. And this gives us a new image over here as you can see, it also has the color scheme of the gradient that we blended over the image and creates a new image that is following more of the color setup that we want to use. So that is also an interesting experiment that kind of sticks a lot closer to the input of our model. And then over here, I'm simply doing an ultimate as the upscale two times for that. I'm using the 4x ultra sharp model and over here, you can see we have a wonderful output of that image. I hope there was a little bit in there for everybody to try this amazing gradient trick out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and join me tomorrow for my live stream. Bye.